many mobile devices are supporting people to read maps. We will look into some of the aspects related to accessibility of apps on one hand and also on the improvement of mobility by using modern apps that are available on either uh, iOS or uh, Android mobile phones. I've been saying many blind people have problems in uh, being mobile and this really affects the well-known group of people with wheelchairs. They cannot master easily stairs and climb up uh, where other people simply make a step over. Uh, but what is not so well known is that blind people uh, often can get lost if they don't know the uh, environment, if they have come here for the first time and then it's quite important uh, to get additional support. Other groups that are affected by mobility issues are people with aphasia. Um, they also can get easily lost after some time. And also uh, elderly people um, who can't go that far anymore uh, benefit very much from good explanations of where to go and how to find uh, some building or some other place. And finally, people with dementia they are pretty mobile, but uh, actually the, the problem is to help them not to get lost uh, and disoriented. So we did a survey in 2008 and asked about 80, 90 blind people um, on what they would expect from uh, uh, IT in order to support them with mobility. And 20 3% in total were responding that they need really assistance when traveling. But on the other hand, 77% travel on their own without such assistance. And <clears throat> actually this is explained by another figure where 48% uh, uh, said that they have learned the routes uh, by mobility training sessions. So they have been trained to master a certain specific route and uh, don't uh, want to leave that route specifically. So in terms of support and assistive technology, the well-known long white cane is most common. It's really uh, something that 12 of our 88 subjects were saying. Tactile maps, on the other hand, something that is not easily uh, portable is used by 12 people again and uh, 6 people are using a guide dog while only 3 people have been using uh, in 2008 already a navigation system. That's not so much. What we find most interestingly is that the shortest route, something that is calculated by navigation systems for cars, is not the best one. Most blind people, 94%, in our survey said that they would accept a better route even if it's a longer route. So in order to uh, come up with assistive technology to support navigation we need to distinguish two modes or two models for navigation. One that blind people really master quite well with the help of the long cane is reaching out about 1.2 meters, maybe maximum 10 meters what we call the, the micro-navigation. So it means blind people simply are um, experiencing through the tip of the cane what is on the floor and by listening to the echo what is around them. Uh, since every tap by the cane on the floor creates some additional reflections. Beyond these 10 meters uh, we talk about macro-navigation. That's far more difficult to plan when we are uh, traveling all around in cities or even beyond cities, but even inside buildings, large buildings like train stations or airports. This can be very uh, difficult to master because uh, we have to develop a kind of spatial cognition of what is around us. Spatial cognition means that the geometric reasoning about what is around us can be performed. And actually by analysis of blind people walking in gymnasiums and elsewhere, uh, it has been determined that it doesn't matter whether these people are blindfolded, congenitally blind 
or have acquired blindness at a later point in time. So, one of the uh, first steps uh, beyond geometric reasoning, so what is closer, what is further away, is the ability to project 3D surfaces uh, onto the ground. Uh, I'm living in Dresden, and Dresden is a city within a valley. All those hills around the valley, around the rear Elbe, uh, have to be mapped to some uh, flat surface in order to understand what are distances in this city. Um, beyond that type of cognition, um, the next, let's say, uh, abstractions levels are dealing with relationships within the city or uh, within uh, some region. This means that typically we start from landmarks and build up a, a star relationship. And based on these relationships, this can be extended to uh, temporal relationships or to uh, expressing them uh, in verbal form. So whenever we build assistive technology, we have to t keep in mind that users, that people who use such an app, develop their understanding on and are at a different level of understanding already. So when it comes to develop new applications, new apps around maps in order to support mobility, uh, we have to measure also the success, how well such an, a solution actually helps people to build up maps. This is traditionally done simply by asking people. On the other hand, in verbal explanations we make a lot of simplifications and don't say everything that other people actually uh, would know from looking where you have been walking. So drawing a map is typically performed in order to measure uh, understanding of somebody who is sighted and who can draw by himself. For blind people this again is a bit more difficult and therefore we have been uh, developing an, a method around the reconstruction of maps using uh, metal stripes uh, that actually are magnetic so that they can be positions on a surface on some uh, foil and then are attached to it and are not easily uh, moved. So by m counting the number of correct crossing, the number of correct um, routes and parts of routes, we can actually compare numerically how well uh, blind people have been able to use a particular uh, solution. We have done this in a study by comparing um, maps when we are reading this with fingers on, on a tactile printout versus um, touch tablet PCs and also uh, other technologies based on uh, Pinmatix devices. And it turned out that there are clearly winners uh, simply by computing the correctness of the mental map that has been uh, developed then by placing magnetic stripes on a, uh, a surface. So I hope this gives you an idea how development of user interfaces for application development around maps can be performed. Thank you.